Welcome back, welcome back guys to the show, I'm Titus, and let's get started in this episode, episode number 299, I can't believe it, 299, wow, it's crazy, and I got a little treat for you guys, episode 300 is already recorded, and Thomas and Travis are going to be on it, and I'm pretty stoked and excited to say we hit 300, I think every hunter is just a mile marker and a landmark for the show um there hasn't been too many times i ever thought about quitting the podcast maybe on the youtube channel i don't know how many of you guys actually you guys that watch or listen on the youtube channel the podcast can you let me know down in the comments of this episode give this video a thumbs up if you're listening on there if you're listen, listening on apple please leave a review and a comment on there give us five stars Spotify, there ain't just ain't much you can do there. I think you can actually rate on Spotify. So if you guys listen on Spotify, I can do that. I appreciate that too. But anyways, I've never thought about, in fact, I think the longest term I'll do anything is this podcast. But as far as the video portion of it, it adds a lot more work to it. And um, that one, I'm always like, eh, do I want to keep doing that? But it keeps growing. So it's kind of hard to let that go. But anyways, kind of want to jump on here. On episode 299 before 300, um, we got some good topics that Travis and Thomas and I cover, but just a couple things, kind of more updates and a couple answers to some of your guys' questions. This will be a pretty short episode, but um, I get tons of emails and I try to keep up with them and sometimes just so hard. I know there's a lot that slipped through the cracks. I just, time goes by and then I'm like, man, it's been three months. I'm I just sometimes I still reply and sometimes I don't. But anyways, one that I got that I thought would be a good one just to talk about for a minute. And I mean, this is so situational based. I guess it doesn't apply, but he you asked. And so I wanted to respond to Jonah Mayo's email from a few months back. Um, he was talking about gear storage. He was saying basically that him and his wife made this deal. He gets the garage she gets the house. And I'm, I told him that's pretty much what me and my wife have going on, our kind of deal. I do have an office. Um, and we live in a pretty, I'd say it's our house is about 1650. So I don't know. Some To some that may seem bigger to a lot that seems small. I don't know. I think it's kind of just an average home size for a family of four. I'm happy with it. I like it. I like to stay. I've lived in some big houses and you just kind of get separated and you're too far away from each other, in my opinion. I like to stay kind of close to each other. But anyways, um, I do have an office and I'm actually glad I do now because I do basically hybrid style work. I work at home and out in the field. So I really needed a place. So in the end, it worked out because I was thinking, man, I need to get the girls their own bedrooms or whatever. But uh, this actually works out. And I mean, I use this for work, for my everyday job. I use it for pod, uh, podcasting, which is a whole setup right here. I use it for my clothes and shell storage and guns, cleaning my guns, calls, mounts. You guys, this is only a quarter of what you're seeing of what I have in here as far as um, mounts. And my friends have been here, got pictures, military stuff on the walls, all kinds of stuff. But anyways, got two desks, and this table is a third. I mean, so I got a desk, a work desk, and a table for podcasting. So there's a lot crammed in this small room. <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, the garage. Now, I say half of that's hers and half that's mine. We keep a, a big freezer out there. That way we can put meat and stuff like that for dinner and stuff, but... I, I was keeping all my decoys in there, which was a disaster because um, unless you're hanging them on the wall, I feel like it's not the greatest place to put them because decoys, a dozen decoys on string, you know, on stringers basically can take up a lot of room unless to me you're hanging them from the ceiling or from the wall. Well, I didn't have no wall space left in there, so Thomas uh, lives out where he lives and now he's got a lot more storage than he used to. So he said he was cool with me putting all of our decoys cause that's mine and his at the same time out there. So that saves so much room. But for those of you that don't have that um, opportunity, I think hanging them up on the wall is a great idea, especially if they're Texas rig style. Um, if they're not, that may, that does make it a little bit tougher, but then you could put them in bags, you know, slotted bags. 
and you can put them in there and store them like that, which is what I did for a long time too. Um, I think why we switched to Texas rigs is a lot quicker and easier, especially if you're in a boat and you're making moves. I mean, it's kind of easier in the field too. The only reason I ever was kind of against Texas rigs a little bit is that the decoys are kind of always banging on each other and scratching up each other. But if you have a high-quality decoy, it's not really going to matter. And like I said, we tested those FA decoys so much um, and let them just kind of almost purposely beat them up, and they just took the beating, and they still look really good. So um, if you got decoys that hold up like that, you don't, you know, you don't need nothing to worry about. If they're chipping, though, and they're scratching up, I mean, you have to probably do a lot of touch up, touching up before season starts. But, hey, I mean, if they're that tough, that's a good thing. So we, we're we going to try some things this season. Um, not try, we're going to do is I'm a big packable guy. Like, and this will lead into my next topic I talk about here with the boat. But the packable Dakota Decoy packables, we're, we are running still, guys. Don't worry. We're still running FA Final Approach decoys. I really like them, like the paint jobs, like the quality, like the toughness. Um, but in the boat, where it seems like we're primarily hunting mallards more when we're hunting out of it, not saying that's all we hunt, because we will do some diver stuff too. But um, uh, we basically just want to stay lighter. Now, that being said, we are switching to the 50 horse where the weight is not going to be much of an issue. But I tell you what, every 20 pounds, every 10 pounds makes a difference in a boat and how it's distributed across the boat. So I, will, I want to go, and we talked about it and we agreed on it. We really love the Dakota Decoy Packables, and I'm not going to do flocking no more. Like, I'm out of the flock flocking fad. Like... I'm not saying it's wrong, and I know if you take care of those, and I used some with some friends this year that they use their full body flocked um, floaters, and they look sweet. <laughs> so I don't think there's nothing wrong with it, but you really got to baby them, and there may be times that we put a dozen out and do something like that. I'm not saying we're not going to do it, but I will say this. If you don't baby them, if you don't put them in an individual slot bag, and then you put them, get them out of the sun, it's just like and that stuff starts fading you got to reflock the whole thing and and do it over again so i'm only saying that to say this basically i just don't even want to deal with that anymore i can touch up paint a lot easier than i can to have something reflocked or do it myself i have no desire to do it. i know there's guys out there gonna say hey i do it i've done it i believe you and i know it can be done i just don't want to take the time to do it and I, I don't think thomas does either so anyways that's kind of i'm kind of going with the gear storage it can be really cumbersome, and if you have a lot of gear, it takes up a lot of room, and I've heard it from my wife a few times, like, man, you take up half that garage, and I'm like, yeah, you're right, I do, and it does get annoying, and I like to be organized. I like stuff all up on the shelves. I also use a lot of those storage boxes from Walmart, so if you want to put stuff in that, that's just like individual things that basically gets can get sloppy because it's it's smaller things and you've got a bunch of them and then they're just laying all over the place get those little cheap super cheap even the dollar general probably has those um those basically plastic containers with the lids i love those and that's what i use to store a lot of my stuff so when i know the season's over i start packing everything in there put it up put my blind bags up close the lids stick it up there that way nothing can get in there and chew anything up if just say if you had rodents or something weird like that um, mice, whatever, and it's it's sealed. It's not getting all dusty. It's not getting beat up by weather or just environment. You know, we get really hot in the summer and then cold, cool in the winter. But if it's in there, it seems like it protects a little bit better. So I would say those plastic bins from the Dollar General or Walmart are great, and you can always have them, and they're cheap. Um, and as far as gear i do have my stuff hanging up so it, i mean i don't know if that kind of abuses it i don't put it up or nothing but guns try to at the end of the season clean them up clean the threads put them away store them put them in a case make sure they're always dry you don't want to put something away that's wet although like i said on that beneath benelli eat those cordoba it's crazy that thing won't rust i put it away wet on purpose to see open it in the next day and there wasn't a drop of rust anywhere now, that being said, I don't suggest doing that with any of your other guns unless it has that protective coating. 
like that gun does. But anyways, um, I don't really have a ton. I mean, it's just situational dependence. Some guys get a whole garage themselves to store their stuff. Some guys get a shed, and they can put all kinds of stuff. Like Elliot, my friend from Freelance Duck Hunting, he gets the, he gets a whole outside shed. He puts everything in. And even that can get messed up. He says every year, once or twice a year, he's got to go in there and reorganize everything because while you're hunting, you're exhausted. You're not sitting there worrying about how organized everything is. I mean, it's nice to do that. We try the best we can, but... You know how it gets sometimes. Because you also got Thanksgiving and Christmas during that time, too. That's holidays that are taking your attention. New Year's, you're dealing with that. Your family trying to, you know, do everything evenly with family. Have some balance there, you know. But that's probably all I want to dig into on that. Um, But talking about the boat and everything. So I know we've talked a little bit about it. We're going to go in more detail once we have it. And we'll, of course, put the video up. But we are getting that 50 horse from Pro Drive. Been talking to KP once a week, once every two weeks, just getting the status and talking about things that are going on there. So he's going to come on the podcast soon. As soon as that 50 horse is public and revealed, they start posting videos about it. He's going to come on and talk about it, maybe even his brother too, and talk about that. But we are so. Man, we're so pumped about that. We wish we were getting a little earlier, but it's going to be later in the summer that we get that boat. But we did go back. So we started with a 1854 Gator Tail. Then we went to a, I'm sorry, a 1754 Gator Tail 40 horse to a 1848 Pro Drive 40 horse, but no instant reverse. To now, we're going to the 50 horse, which is a Tahatsu upper 50 horse four stroke motor with the Pro Drive lower. And that's going to have a f- full power reverse, instant reverse, and um, just regular, and the switch. So it switches in between. So it's really nice and slick. And. But the the boat size, the whole size that we're going to go back to, well, not back to because we actually haven't had this combo because we had 1754, then we had 1848. Now we're going to do 1854. And part of that is the stability moving around. Not that I ever felt like the 1848 was unstable, but we always have two or three guys in there. Very rarely four, sometimes four. But... The other thing was bigger water too. Sometimes when we're hunting that big water with big chop, it just does. I will say I felt like I had a little bit more secure feeling in the big water with those two foot, three foot rollers, just a little bit more width because you get start getting sideways on that stuff. You know, I just, it's, I don't know when you have to cross the way the rollers are gone, it's not a good feeling. You basically got to go straight, you know, across them and then cut over because you do not want to go parallel with them. And get that little tipsy feeling. It's not a good feeling. So we did go back to a little bit wider, a little more room, which we didn't we didn't feel like we were lacking at all. But I just I don't know with that fifty horse having that power there. And I talked to some people that were talking about the speeds with that size. I'm like, let's just go back to the size we really liked and went with originally with the length. We'll have the timber deck. We love the exterior. I'm sorry, the interior green lights. We're doing that again. The rooster lights green again. Um, we got the timber deck on there. We'll have the 50 horse on there. So much more quiet, faster. Um, so excited about that. Um, did we do anything else different? We did something else. Oh, we, we're going the bigger light bar. And we might add some more lights on ourselves. Some side, some side spots. Um, and this is all stuff we've learned. And decided to do just from experience now with our short little window of experience Um, in in an actual duck boat. Um, What else were we going to do? We we love the, uh, I can't even think of what they're called, so I just apologize for belling on you on that. Spud poles. Love the spud poles. Man, that was was such a, in fact, it took a while for us to get used. Oh, like, oh yeah, we got spud poles here. Just lock it in right here. So those are so clutch. Um, and the cool thing is, I, I don't think I've said this on here, but Harrison bought our boat. 
So that was a really easy transition. And um, so you're going to still see it in the videos when we do trips together. If I got, we got ours and got his, it's kind of cool. It's going to still stay in the family. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, doing the same paint job, which is kind of not custom, but kind of because we don't put the tan in the nat gear, the natural gear. Um, let me think. I don't, I don't want to go too crazy on that. That's for that. That's the most part for the most part, what, what we did. And, um, yeah, we're excited. So also one more thing I want to say, and I'm only at 15 minutes. I feel like I've been talking forever, but I'm, I'm not going to be much longer here on this episode. It's just kind of a update on things that are going on. Um, pattern vids are coming up. We already started recording. I told you guys we were going to, the first one we did is Thomas's with the decoy choke. His 20 gauge Benelli Ethos Cordoba. We did it with the decoy choke, I believe, right? No. I think it was that. No, it wasn't. It was the passing choke. So that video is recorded. I'm trying to build up a log of pattern videos before I start releasing them. So they're kind of coming out every week um, for a while. Um, I would like to record my 28 gauge this week. And probably maybe my Browning A5. Some of you were emailing me and asking me about my Browning A5. Um, write this down real quick. You guys were asking me uh, how that is. That I have not done yet. And I'm excited about that too, except for the fact that I don't shoot it as much anymore. <laughs> but I still want to get it patterned. I want to get it dialed. I got all the papers. Again, shout out to... Um, Oh, now the name's going to evade me. I hate that. I hate when I'm starting to say something. I leave you guys hanging. Um, The pattern papers, Chase Warfowl. The pattern papers that I have from Chase Warfowl. If you guys want awesome pattern paper um, that has a duck on it, and he's going to start offering different things like a turkey, different types of ducks. It doesn't matter. He'll do it. And he also does some other things on his website that I think you guys will like. So ChaseWarfowl.com. Just look up Chase Waterfowl on Google if ChaseWaterfowl.com doesn't work. But he does the pattern papers. I love those things. They're they're awesome. It's so it's I love them. I think they're the best ones out there. Just for the fact that he does the 30 inch circle and then and goes down from there. So you got the quadrants. Actually, it's more than that. More than quadrants is four, but I believe there's six. Uh, let's see, three, six, nine, twelve. So you can count all the pellets and, and see, you know, if you're heavy on one side or lower or top or bottom or more towards the center or outside. It, it's just nice. So we use those in that pattern video. I think it was really clean, really good. Not too long. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. Um, and then, like I said, the other ones that we're going to be doing. And we will be changing ammos, too. Like Thomas did heavy bismuth out of his gun, too. But I do want to do, like, heavy metal, heavy metal extreme. Um maybe even heavy bismuth, and we'll see what that is like out of the 12 Browning A5. We're going to do Harrison's gun, guns, so we'll have all that. We're going to do a lot. Like There's going to be several, so you'll see different variations and different types of ammo, at least in the heavy shot family, because that's what we shoot. Um, so, yeah. And we, I actually, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get some ammo from Jimmy, hit some hand loads with those lower speeds, and we're going to shoot um, some stuff with his stuff to show you the difference. And to be honest with you, it's probably going to look pretty good. So if you guys want to hand load or you can find the ammo that has those lower feet per second, um, you might want to start hand loading. Um, and it looks fun too. I definitely want to start doing it just for, just for the fun of it. Um, I know it's not crazy easy or cheap anymore to buy all that stuff but you still can do it from what he was telling me so anyways that is the update that's the things that are going on um things have been going great i'm staying busy with work staying staying busy with life last week was crazy hectic and um got more episodes coming up been recorded oh we did a QA with jimmy i can't wait to put that one out i think that's going to be a really popular one because there was some really good info on that one it's questions you guys asked um that i asked him and he answered brilliantly and i think it was really good and i told him i go this is probably going to be a pretty popular one to be honest with you because of the conversation that took place in it so that is coming up 
Um, soon that should be episode 301, I believe, is how I'm planning that. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then, like I said, this week will be episode 300 with Travis and Thomas and then Jimmy Muller and then other guests. I'm, I'm working on it, guys. Um, have some more guests on here. I, I'm not trying to burn out one guest, but when you have the knowledge like Jimmy has, it's kind of hard not to take advantage of it. So anyways, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. Talking a little bit about gear storage and the 50 horse coming up and then the pattern videos. Um, we will see you guys on the next one.